All right, let's bring in Herald Sun columnist and Sky News host Steve Price. Let's have a look at this and the rest of the day's big stories. What did you think of these remarks from Michelle Bullock yesterday? Well, I think it's typical of people at the top. They don't understand what's going on in the real world in Australia. I mean, Shari, um, she should not be in Hong Kong saying things like that because clearly the people of Australia are really struggling. I mean, you quoted the figures there on, on what the increase after 13 rate rises would be in an 800000 or a $1 million dollar mortgage, and plenty of people have that size mortgage. Uh, that's after-tax money, we've got to remember. Uh, and people... It's, it's not just people with mortgages, it's small businesses as well. So uh, the, the head of the reserve needs to be much more careful about the language that she uses because people really are hurting. And I think that anonymous politician you quoted who said she needs to get out of the boardroom and out into the suburbs mm. is absolutely spot on. And I was just thinking the other day, I was catching a, a train in Melbourne, how many of our senior politicians, senior bureaucrats, people like Bullock, actually you'd catch a train or, or get on a bus or, or, or walk through some of the outer suburbs of our country. They don't. They drive around in, in chauffeur-driven cars and they're completely out of touch. Mm -hmm. Look, another story today, uh, this by Jenna Clark in The Australian. The Guardian Australia's editor-in-chief, Lenore Taylor, has raised concerns about the signing of this anti-Israel letter by 24 of the publication's journalists and other staff. Uh, this has really firmly put in the spotlight whether the reporting in The Guardian is impartial or not, I would argue it's not. The letter, of course, was part of this media union campaign demands uh, for the media to treat information from the Israel government with as much scepticism as the terror group Hamas. I mean, look, with more than 20 reporters, editors, cartoonists and contributors to The Guardian signing this letter, it does explain some of the anti-Israel bias that we see in The Guardian. Well, it should be a warning to anybody that if you consume what The Guardian produces, then you're getting one side of the story. To, to, to compare Hamas with the democratically elected government of Israel is disgraceful. Hamas is a terrorist organisation. It's no better than ISIS before it or Al-Qaeda. And for those people who work in The Guardian to sign that letter, I think Lenore Taylor is 100% right to say that those people should not have done that. We know that in uh, the nine newspapers, that same letter, anyone who signed that has now been sidelined and is not permitted to cover the conflict that's unfolding in the Middle East. Lenore's right. Those people should reject what they've done and say, look, we apologise, because you can't, you can't now consume The Guardian without knowing and thinking, OK, this is pro-Palestine, pro-Hamas, and we shouldn't read it. Yeah. Look, I, I think the fact that The Guardian and the ABC have just slightly said, oh, you know, you, shouldn't, you should think before you sign because people might question the impartiality of your reporting. I mean, to me, that's a very weak response. The fact that Bevan Shields, the editor of the City Morning Herald, said to staff, if you've signed this letter, well, you can't report on the conflict because you're not going to come to it with an objective position. I think that's a much stronger response and, and the Herald should be praised for that. Um, of course, you know, much better if you're at Sky News in the Australian because I can't imagine any of us would ever sign a letter like that. Now, Steve, in your state, in Victoria... Um, it, we're hearing that there's now a new tax because the government under the new Premier Jacinta Allen has done a deal with the Greens. Tell us about this. Well, they're broke, so they've got to do all the sort of deals they can. This is uh, a tax on properties that are not fully occupied by people over a two-year or three-year period. It's a little complicated, but this law existed for some parts of inner Melbourne. So if you had a vacant house... Uh, the government could tax you into making sure you either knock it over, rebuild it, rent it out or get someone in there. But they've now decided to broaden it to the whole state. And so what that means is you've got a whole bunch of, you know, holiday houses where people might not go for 12 months. They're going to now attract this tax. But the ridiculous part about this, Sherry, is, and it's 1%, by the way, of the value of the land that the house sits on, and, and this will come into effect here next year, and it means that if the property is unoccupied for, you know, two or three years, then you're going to cop that tax. I suspect the, the, the reason they've done it is they're going to try and stop people land banking, so buying a big property and not living in it. But it's going to, it's going to catch anybody who owns a holiday house. Mm. And the ridiculous part is that it's not going to mean that those holiday houses are going to be able to be accessed for rent by people. 
because the jobs are not in these little holiday communities where these houses exist. It's just another grab for cash. The Victorian government's yeah. broken. They need money. Another typical response. They can't curb spending. They've got to raise taxes. Steve Price, thank you so much for joining me.